Hello, everyone. This is Alexis Hutchinson with the FYE Talks podcast, and today we have a super special guest, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and explain to us the WIND Center, what it does, how it helps, and all the great benefits students can get if they choose to participate with the WIND Center. Hello, everyone. My name is Amber Hoobery, and I'm the first year experience program facilitator at ECTC. And that's kind of a long title, but essentially my main um, purpose there at the college is that I coordinate all the tutoring services that are provided through the Wind Center. So the Wind Center was created at the very end of summer 2019 semester. And the Wind Center was created out of a collaboration between multiple grant programs at the college um, in order to try to help meet some more of the tutoring needs of students, particularly extended hours tutoring. So the TRIO SSS program, TRIO EOC, Ready to Work program and FYE um, all got together and realized that there were many students that um, are non-traditional students and then students simply that maybe have recently come out of high school. However, they're working part-time or full-time jobs and they were not able to um, utilize the tutoring services that were provided at the college before 4.30 in the afternoon due to classes slash work schedules. So there was a little bit more of a need for um, tutoring services to be extended beyond 4.30 p.m. So that's kind of where the Wind Center was born. Um, so we offer tutoring services Monday through Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we offer in-person um, tutoring as well as virtual or online tutoring. And the tutoring services cover a wide variety of um, courses or class sections. So they range from English 101 and 102 um, tutoring to Math 150, statistics, um, anatomy and physiology, etc. So we try to um, always have a wide variety of tutors that are um, on staff. That way we can help students in a wide variety of subject areas. Um, stemming from that, um, we actually were in the process of creating um, some virtual tutoring options right before the pandemic started. Um, so that kind of made it a smooth and easy transition for us as far as being able to offer online tutoring. Um, and this semester alone, um, we've had a lot more students utilize uh, virtual tutoring services as compared to in-person services, um, obviously because of the pandemic and the fact that uh, transportation also is a big issue for many students. So that has come in um, very handy and it's something that a lot of students have utilized pretty excessively this semester. And the way that we do our virtual tutoring services um, is that we create online individual tutoring sessions between a student and a tutor on Blackboard Collaborate, um, as well as a few other platforms. So occasionally if um, a student maybe is having difficulty with their Blackboard account, then uh, we can easily move a tutoring session over to Zoom if we need to do that. Um, but it's always worked really well as far as our tutors and our students being able to interact um, you know, on Blackboard and Zoom, and also be able to share um, documents and slides to kind of assist in that tutoring process. So a prime example of that is I have one tutor um, that works part-time and she tutors in anatomy and physiology classes, uh, medical microbiology, and some nursing courses. And so you can imagine those are very hands-on lab coordinated types of classes. And so at times that could be viewed as being pretty difficult to do that type of tutoring virtually. Um, but because of these platforms allow you to share screens, our tutors are able to pull up a lot of different diagrams to really explain things a little bit more in depth to make sure that students um, you know, are getting the assistance that they need. In addition to um, Blackboard and Zoom, we do have a separate um, Wind Center email account that we use that students can send any paper to for any class in order to have a tutor uh, proofread over the paper and provide any recommended edits or suggestions. And that is a service that um, many students in our FYE and our English classes utilize, probably more so than some other class sections, um, but it's there for any class or any writing assignment. Um, any student can simply just email um, ectc.windcenter at kctcs.edu and attach whatever paper it is that they are wanting edited. And they also attach a copy of the course assignment and rubric. That way I can assist the tutor in making sure that they're obviously meeting the criteria 
for that assignment. And then a tutor will review that um, on their regularly scheduled work time. And then they provide those suggestions um, back to me and I scan and email that document um, with those suggestions to the student. And we typically have about a one to two day turnaround time, uh, pending whenever the student uh, sends that to the email address. So example, we um, were open Monday through Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. And so if we have a student that sends in an email with a paper on you know, Thursday night at 11 p.m., then they're probably not gonna get that paper back until the following Monday whenever our tutors are um, back on shift, so to speak. Um, so, but typically during the week, whenever we get those, we try to have a one to two day turnaround time on all of those um, documents that are sent to us. So that's a really um, convenient service for a lot of our students. And particularly because we do have so many students that are operating remotely from home right now and taking online classes, because maybe they also have children of their own that are um, in the process of doing NTI at home um, and it's not like those students can just readily come to the college. Um, you know, they have children at home that they're tending to, and maybe they also can't necessarily have a virtual tutoring session at a specific day and time because, you know, their kids need them throughout the day as well, but they can just simply email a paper at any time and a tutor can review that and then just send it right back to them. So again, that's a really convenient um, service and feature that a lot of our students um, utilize pretty accessibly. Fantastic. And so it sounds like the Wind Center is meeting students' needs all across the board as far as being virtual in this current climate and as people try and, you know, maintain social distancing and healthy work practices and whatnot. And so before the pandemic, and I'm sure to a certain degree now, I know that the Wind Center was operating like lunch and learns and workshops and things like that. And can you kind of explain that portion of the Wind Center and how it meets the needs of students? Because I know that you guys have held topics and conversations on a wide variety of, of great things. Sure. So in addition to the tutoring services that um, we provide through the Wind Center, we also offer lunch and learn workshops as well as a peer mentoring program. So as far as the lunch and learn seminars or workshops, before the pandemic, we typically offered um, on average one to two, sometimes more workshops a week in the Wind Center. And oftentimes we would have some type of, um, you know, snack or meal available to the students that came to attend the workshop. And workshops would range from, um, you know, going over the various services that are provided through our library at the college to um, a community member maybe that served as like an HR recruiter that would come in and talk with students about how to make a solid resume and cover letter and the do's and don'ts of, um, you know, doing an interview with a company, things to keep in mind and things to avoid. So we would have quite the variety of topics, um, you know, centered on each of those workshops. And it really ranged more from the types of um, subjects that our students would bring up to us. So we tried to have workshops that were centered around the various content that students were learning in the FYE 105 course. And we try to hold workshops that parallel that content throughout the semester, but then we would also pull in community members to do kind of like guest plug workshops throughout the semester as well. So for instance, we had um, the former um, assistant CEO of Kentucky Farm Bureau that did a workshop centered more on kind of how business really does work and um, kind of the breaking the myths of what students actually think running a business is or, um, you know, operating and management in some capacity versus what it, you know, it truly is. So, um, you know, those workshops really range um, in content. And then after the pandemic, we moved all of our workshops um, virtually for the spring uh, 2020 semester. And then for the fall, we offered a few in person, um, kind of in larger meeting areas, just so that students could um, social distance and really space out and things like that. Um, but we've really gone back more towards um, the end of this fall semester on just having virtual workshops because we found that we actually have more participation in those right now just because of things with the pandemic. And that is a much safer option for students and faculty and staff as well as community members. So one of our biggest community supporters as far as workshops is concerned is um, a bound credit union. They have um, been awesome to work with as far as providing um, guest speakers for workshops through um, the credit union. And it's centered more on 
financial education and credit and lending, investing, et cetera. So they um, have been an excellent partner through the FYE program as far as offering some workshops that are very applicable to all students. Every student needs to know about proper money management, credit, lending, investing, you name it. So they have been a solid partner providing you know, students some workshops that are truly very critical um, with content that they really need to know, particularly at this time um, in their life as they're pursuing their post-secondary education. Maybe they have some more expenses as compared to um, being a non-student. So um, that has been very, very helpful that we have so many uh, community supporters to offer some really credible and awesome workshops for students. That's great. And so also in conjunction with the Wind Center and the programs that you guys offer, I know that you've been unveiling a peer mentoring program as well. Is that something that you, know, you could give us a little bit more information about? Sure. So when the Wind Center first started last, the very end of last summer, um, we were looking at also starting and coordinating a peer mentoring program. And we got that off the ground um, in January of 2020 and had all the mentors trained and everyone was ready to go. And then that was when the pandemic hit. So we moved kind of peer mentoring to having that as a virtual um, option for students mm -hmm. in the spring. And then we were able to really get that program off the ground more this fall semester. Um, you know, as things kind of started opening back up and we were able to be back on campus and just to really kind of get that program going. So the way it works is um, we hired a lead peer mentor who serves as kind of the um, liaison between mentors and myself. And the, the whole premise of the peer mentoring program is that any student that's on campus um, has the option to be able to be paired with a peer mentor who is a returning ECTC student, not a first semester student. So they have some experience under the belt and they come in and they get paired with a peer mentor and that peer mentor will meet with them um, as regularly as works for the mentee and the mentor, just to simply help that student that's in need of kind of navigating that post-secondary experience. So if a student's coming in as a first semester student and they say, hey, I'm a first generation college student. I know very little about how all of this works. Um, you know, I don't have any siblings whatsoever that went to college and I just really need some help kind of navigating the way all of this works, whether it's scheduling classes or figuring out how to use Blackboard, you name it, then they can uh, reach out to us and we'll go ahead and assign them a peer mentor and that peer mentor will help them with that entire process and answer any questions that they may have. So our peer mentors are also um, assigned to cover all of the FYE 105 classes. So if you are a student in an FYE 105 class, then you automatically have a peer mentor that's assigned to your class that you can reach out to at any time. But we do have those students that are also not necessarily taking an FYE 105 class because their degree plan does not require it. And those students still have the option to be assigned to a peer mentor if they would like. They just have to reach out to us and let us know that and then we can um, assign somebody to them. Fantastic. And so it sounds like the Wind Center is doing a lot of really great things to really help students from the moment that they walk in the door to the moment that they're transferring with, you know, tons of support, tons of really great programs and workshops and information that goes far beyond just, you know, here's how to write a good paper or, you know, here's how to complete this equation, money management, career readiness, things that really impact you once you leave ECTC. So thank you, Ms. Amber, for kind of giving us the lowdown on what the Wind Center does and um, how it's helping students this semester. Is there any words of wisdom, words of encouragement you'd like to leave with students as we get done with this semester and kind of head into a spring? I would really encourage students to seek out all of their resources early in the semester. So don't wait until the very end of the semester when it's looking like you may fail a course before you reach out for tutoring. Go ahead at the very beginning of the semester and set up consistent tutoring so that you're getting the help that you need from the very beginning. That way it's not like you're at risk for getting behind. Um, I would definitely keep that in mind. And another thing is the resources are always there. Um, you just really need to ask for them or ask for that help. So um, I encourage students to just simply keep that in mind um, and if you don't know where to start um, in the process, then ask whoever is, has been one of your contacts um, at the college. So prime example, um, you know, last summer we were contacting students that had applied but hadn't registered in classes yet. And in the process you know, of contacting those students, um, we were one of you know, the first people that um, 
you know, had some type of uh, contact with a lot of those students. So those students have reached out, um, you know, to me throughout this entire fall semester because it was just one of the first relationships that they built with somebody at the college. So they've reached out to me with questions that a lot of the times in no way, shape or form pertain to anything necessarily with my position, but I work with the college. So I know how to direct them to somebody else in another office that maybe addresses that issue, um, you know, or can help with that. So even, you know, if you're a student and you say, I have no idea where to start on this issue, start with whoever it is that you know, and they will, you know, let you know kind of where to go, um, on that issue, whether it's to another office or another specific person. So I just still say, don't, uh, you know, wait until the last minute, whenever you need help, um, be sure to reach out for those services early on. Absolutely, thank you so much for speaking with me today, Amber. And would you plug your contact information in case anybody would like to get in contact with the Wind Center? Sure, so um, you can reach me via email at amber.hubrey, and it's W-H-O-B-R-E-Y, at kctcs.edu. Um, you can also send me in um, or call me at my um, office phone number at 270-706-8567. Um, and then also my um, Google voice number um, is um, 270-883-8767. So you could text that number at any time as well if um, you had any questions or needed any type of assistance. Awesome. Thank you so much. And as always, tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. for another excellent episode of the FY Talks podcast. If you'd like to be involved with more episodes, you can always find the contact information for myself and anybody that we host on Facebook and all over our different social media platforms. So check that out. Thank you and have a great day.